I'm not a fan of the British. As you said, that they absolutely torched, humiliated, annihilated India and Indians. But they did build railways and they did do public reforms. So what was their agenda? You are right. Uh, they did build railways. They did do what they called were public reforms. They tried to reform Indian society and remove all the backwardness from Indian society and all that, right? That's what the British did. Let's take some other examples. Today, the Pakistanis are building roads in Balochistan. They, are all, they may also be building railways and some public works. Are they doing it for the sake of the people of Balochistan? Or are they creating an infrastructure of extraction? Because Balochistan is, is, is rich in natural resources and other things. And the Pakistanis want to extract that out of Balochistan. And that is why they are building the roads and the other infrastructure. So this infrastructure they are building is for their own benefit. It is not for the benefit of the people of Balochistan. Today, the Chinese are building the so-called CPEC, China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. Roads, railways, all that. Why are the Chinese doing it? Are they doing it to benefit Pakistan? Or are they doing it to give themselves access to the Indian Ocean and another to give them another inf- piece of infrastructure that can... Uh, ferry materials to China and bypass the Malacca Strait and the other choke points. So the Chinese are building this infrastructure for themselves, for their own benefit. It is not for the benefit of the people of Pakistan. right? The Chinese are building roads, railways, dams and whatnot in Tibet. Are they doing it for the people of Tibet? No. This is the infrastructure of occupation. This is the infrastructure of extraction. It is all for the benefit of Beijing. It is not for the benefit of the people of Tibet. The Chinese say that they have liberated Tibet from serfdom and from the evils of the Dalai Lama. And they have liberated them from the evils and the regressiveness of Dharma and Buddhism and all that. Right? They say that the invasion of Tibet was the emancipation of the Tibetan people. And they have uh, uh, institutionalized lots of public reforms in the society of the Tibet, in the Tibetan society. Well, the the Chinese agenda is to show that their invasion and occupation is actually of some benefit to the people of Tibet. That's how they want to justify their invasion and occupation of Tibet. And that's why they are doing the so-called reforms in the society of Tibet. Similarly, the British Build ra- built railways in India. They build roads in India. It was the infrastructure of occupation, the infrastructure of extraction. Their only agenda in India, their primary agenda in India, was to extract all the wealth out of India. All the resources, all the gold, all the coal, all the silver, all the wealth. And you need roads and railways for that. If you want to extract materials from the interior parts of India. And that's why they built ports like Bombay, now Mumbai, like like Fort St. George or whatever it was, Kolkata, like Madras. They built num- a number of ports. They built, they built roads and railways. It was the infrastructure of occupation and extraction. And the British had to justify their occupation of India. And that's why they portrayed Hinduism as evil and regressive. And that's why they did all these so-called public reforms that we have banned Vidori marriage, we have banned Sati, for example, and we have banned various other things. And we are trying to reform Indian society and reform Hinduism. I'll tell you something, my friends. Hinduism doesn't need reforms. Hinduism is the greatest. Dharma is the greatest culture and, and civilizational culture there is in the world. It doesn't need any reforms. Anybody who says they want to reform Hinduism is the enemy of Hinduism. Hinduism does not need any reforms. The Indian culture does not need reforms. It needs revitalization. It needs rejuvenation. It needs these outside influences to go away. So that is what's needed. The the British tried to portray Hinduism as regressive, as evil, as backward. They themselves instituted these four divisions in society the so-called caste system. Imagine if today, when a child is born, we did not have to write down the caste, which is mandatory. 
imagine when you go to school you don't have to write your caste imagine in the government forms and everything hospitals whatever you don't have to write the caste the so called caste system will disappear overnight it is the government of india which is pro- perpetrating which which is which is perpetuating the so called fake caste system which the british started so all these public reforms the british did were were just to justify their illegal occupation of india it was to serve as a blanket cover up of the incredible plunder they were doing of india's wealth so that is the truth about the so called uh, all these things they built for india the railways were were built with indian money with indian labor the roads were built with indian money with indian labor all these ports and everything was built with indian money with indian labor but they say that they have given us all these things please wake up my friends please the the truth is that they were illegal barbaric brutal occupiers of india they killed more than 100 million people in india more than 100 million people in repeated artificial famines they were the brutal barbaric occupiers of india they are worse than nazi germany by at least an order of magnitude minimum so we have to see this chapter of history for what it really is so you need to edu- to gain an education outside of the education system you need to think critically and be aware of the fact that whatever you have been taught is mo- is mostly lies so that my friends is the truth of what the british did in india